we should be live. Should be or are. But I don't know. I got to go check. There's no man behind the screen, Cooper. It's just me. <laughs> well, you are the man behind the screen. I mean, there's no additional man behind the screen. Oh, it's just one man. Yeah, just, just the one of just you. Just the one. Uh, All right, it's looking like we're live. It looks like it. It looks like it. And I'm paranoid every time now that the audio is <laughs> is borked. Well, it did happen that one time. <laughs> it's borked. Well, it did happen that Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's working. <clears throat> Just making sure. Waiting for you to say something so I could double check it with the stream. Um, okay. Yeah, how, how's your weekend been? I, uh, I had a Christmas yesterday. Oh, family Christmas? Mm-hmm. Nice. On side, yeah. That's no Christmas for me yet, but I uh, did, did get to have a little fun, went bowling. Oh, oh yeah, I, I remember you telling me about uh, that snap. I <laughs> don't want to toot my own horn, but I got a quadruple stripe. I mean, that's pretty so, impressive. It is. That's pretty good. You didn't even take that bowling course in college. I was uh, <laughs> I was president of my middle school bowling club. <laughs> oh, if, that, oh. if that doesn't provide some much-needed background. How many, how many years ago was that now, Cooper? Remind me. Uh, well, it, you got there, you know, double digits. Yeah. By the way, we never did tags. I've just got Rock, Elvis, and Christmas. Do you think it needs anything else? I think that is right on the money. Okay. Um, maybe if you can throw in, like, I don't know, 50s Rock? Uh, sure. I mean, Rock feels like it's stretching it, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's classic rock and roll, right? Yeah. At least some of the songs are. Well, not many. <clears throat> But yeah, I got a I got a nice big uh, six quart stock pot, which would be very wow. nice. It's pretty good. Which I would have used to make soup today, my nice garden soup, since it's gonna be freezing. Uh, but there were no leeks at the store, and my mom had found two leeks and bought them. But then I forgot to bring them back, <laughs> and she forgot to remind me to bring them back. So now I'm. Yeah, that's that's a good thing about stock is that it can uh, it can ha as long as you're there, you can make it. Yeah. So I'll just have to do that tomorrow night after I get some leeks. I did make some polenta burgers today. I saw those. Those look very good. Now, that's the, the polenta was referring to the what you used for the bun, correct? Right, right. It's like this kind of like boiled cornmeal, mm -hmm. which is actually pretty good. <clears throat> I always think of it as having the same consistency as grits. Is that correct? It's not unlike it, like almost like, but like when you fry it, it's almost like solid grits. Okay. Maybe a, uh, approaching like um, extra between like cornbread and grits. Okay. If See, I, I really that. like cornbread, but I really don't like grits. It has been some time since I've tried them, so I think I'm, I'm due for another try. But I don't really care for grits either. But I did like this. So. No, one of them had like a um, no grits, Matt. Grits, not blitz. <laughs> um, one of them had was that like Thousand Island on it or something. It was a, uh, one of them was a uh, red wine reduction sauce. Ooh. And the other was, uh, was this like uh, cottage, no, not cottage, uh, cream cheese, like uh, spinach um, artichoke mixture. Oh, that sounds really nice too. Yeah, that, that one was really good too. And I've got to eat a bunch of artichoke mixture. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I, it's it's pretty good. So I'll figure out a way to use it. Yeah, I just put on as some well. chips. I do have some chips. And it was pretty good, pretty dippable. Bless you. Sorry about that. I muted my mic, so stream didn't hear it. But I wasn't going to mute you. So <laughs> sorry, I did. And what else did I I get? I got my chocolate covered cherries, of course. Of course. I'm going to have to buy some more because I only got the 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 uh, the twelve twelve pack box, and I'm gonna I'm gonna need more than that. So. But I've got my own money now, so I can just go buy some. That's true. That's that's one of the perks of having a job. It's right? a dangerous realization when you realize that you can just get whatever you want. Matt, listen, I realized that I've already had probably four of them, <laughs> and if I if I lacked any more self control, they would already all be gone. They're just so good. I don't understand why you guys think they taste like cough drops. They taste a little like cough drops. They do not. They taste like a delicious little winter Christmassy treat. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it tastes so. We had a uh, we for my my grandma likes to do unconventional meals for holidays, 
Right. So we did uh, breakfast for lunch yesterday. Okay. So I, I got to my grandma's after staying up way too late and uh, was immediately put to work on the griddle making um, French toast. Okay. It took forever because I, I, she, she asked me for a recipe and I'm like, oh, I'll use this Alton Brown recipe. And I didn't realize how many she wanted. So not only do you have to soak the bread, you have to put it in the oven, bake it a little bit, fry it, and then bake it a little bit more. Uh, you've gone for some quality French toast. It was, I mean, it was pretty fantastic. It's a cup of half and half, three eggs, or is it, yeah, a cup of half and half, three eggs, um, and two tablespoons of honey warmed up for 20 seconds so it goes liquidy, and then you whisk that together real quickly, and it makes like a custard, and then you soak the bread a little bit, and then you bake it, and then you fry it with like a table, tablespoon of butter for the whole thing. Not quite, but quite a bit of butter. And ooh, it is nice. You got to make sure you stale the bread first. If you don't stale the bread, it won't be good. You sound like a, your Alton Brown's gotten to you. Do you air fry the bread at any point? No, air fryer. <laughs> I, I, I say that, but my, my aunt actually got a uh, air fryer cookbook. It's one of her Christmas gifts. I held my tongue. I didn't say anything. <clears throat> Were you around when I had that air fryer in college? I think so. Because um, it was what it was a my great grandma bought it from QVC, <laughs> and I think after that they're like, "Okay, grandma, come on, you can't you can't be doing this kind of stuff." Um, and then so I got it, and I tried to use it, and I just couldn't. So I think my aunt got it, and I guess she uses it a lot. Which I mean, good for her. Yeah, if it works, it works. Yeah. I don't think it's very good, but that's just me. That's just because Alton Brown told you that. No, I he, didn't think it was know? good before he did that uh, air fryer rant. That I just, I just learned about that the you know two weeks ago when I went to a show. Okay, I didn't like okay. it before that. Okay, okay. I can form my own opinions. Thank you very much. <laughs> Speaking right. of opinions, do you want to get on with the? Good segue. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> Oh, shit, I forgot to hide all this stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Audio Shop Podcast. Uh, and it is Christmas time, so we're doing a Christmas album. Seems appropriate. Yeah, and this this time we're doing Elvis's Christmas. Now, is that... <clears throat> I had this argument with myself the other day. Is that the proper way to put an apostrophe on a name, somebody's name who ends with an S? Yeah, you put it after the S. I thought that was just for groups not singular no no it's also for um for names okay that's it's good to know. you good to know because then it's not elvis's elvis's is yeah right you can also call it, it's also been reissued as it's christmas time if you prefer to call it that i see well no i kind of like elvis's christmas album by elvis presley by elvis presley it implies that there's only the one <laughs> poor elvis costello Never could release a Christmas album after this. Yep. So, oh, but Elvis. yes, it is Christmas time, so we're reviewing Elvis's Christmas album. And uh, last year we did uh, Michael Bublé's Christmas album, uh, a little more modern. And uh, so for this one, we decided to go with a more classic Christmas album. I know the original thought was us doing The Drifters. Did you just uh, call Elvis classic? Yeah, I mean, he's from the 50s. I mean, I guess he's classic rock and roll, but... I mean, I, I'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who doesn't call Elvis classic, right? That I mean, It just feels weird. What do you mean? He's, he's, I mean, he's, uh, his big stuff was from the 50s and 60s. Yeah. I mean, I guess I guess he does. If, you, if you're going to say classic, at least put rock after it, you know? Yeah. I'm not talking about classic hole. That's what that's what my mind immediately goes to. No, that, that's classic is a very broad term. The Beatles are classic. Uh, Jaws is classic. The movie, right? Uh, Steven Spielberg regrets Jaws because so many great white sharks have been killed. Oh, well, that's depressing. Yeah, they didn't do anything. It wasn't even a real shark. It was a rubber thing. I know, but you know, people are stupid. Well, but no, this is uh, Elvis's Christmas album. 
Uh, we decided to go with this one because it has the uh, unique honor of being the best-selling Christmas album of all time. Really? 20 million copies sold worldwide. This is the best-selling? Yep, of all time. Out of all of them. Mm. And I mean, uh, 20 million copies is, uh, in terms of just albums overall, that's that's really high. I mean, that puts you above, you know, that puts you in like the top 20 albums sold of all time. This is not in the top 20 albums of all time, I can tell you that right now. Uh, I, I didn't say quality, I said sold. I know, but, but usually volume implies quality. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we could uh, stand to argue about that. Because obviously, I, I'm not sure. Well, not to tip my hand, but maybe that, that doesn't translate so far over to this one. Oh, no. I think we've already made it quite clear when I <laughs> expressed amazement that this was the top selling Christmas album of all time. And Elvis is a, is a popular guy. That's true. Yeah, he wrote obviously that one of the best. One of the best-selling artists of all time, obviously. Oh, yeah. That one's Um, easy to believe. Yeah, well, let me me give a little background to those who aren't familiar with Elvis Presley. We didn't watch the uh, recent biopic. He's the guy who um, ate fried peanut butter and banana sandwiches and then uh, died at the ripe old age of 19 from cardiac duress on his uh, Japanese toilet, right? (laughs) Okay, I can't verify the the toilet type. He died at 42, thank you. but no, Elvis Presley, you know, born in 1935, uh, American singer and actor, you know, dubbed the king of rock and roll, and is kind of one of the, considered one of the most significant cultural figures of the 20th century. I mean, obviously, he, he kind of led the charge into the performative rock and roll stylings of the uh, 50s and into the 60s. Um, and he sold... 500 million records worldwide, um, which is insanity. That is that is so many records. Um, it's a couple. I believe he's uh, just barely, yeah, he's just barely beaten out by like the Beatles. So, uh, and there was four of them. Yes, <laughs> divide that. This <laughs> well, three. Hey, three point. Don't be don't be mean to John Lennon. He did good too. <laughs> Um, so one of the, I mean, the second most successful solo, well, probably the most successful solo act of all time. Maybe not kind of like groups. Um, you know, he, he dabbled in a lot of different genres, country, rhythm and blues, pop, gospel, uh, multiple Grammy awards, obviously a bunch of, uh, Billboard 200s. He has the most albums chart on the Billboard 200s. Um, and he is basically, you know, just a, a cultural legend. I'm sure anyone who's listening to this has probably heard of Elvis. Um, but this, Elvis' uh, Christmas album, reissued as It's Christmas Time later, is actually, his thir- is actually his third studio album. So this is pretty early on in his discography. I believe it. <laughs> I, 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 and, you say that, and it makes a lot more sense now. Um, and he actually released a second Christmas album, uh, Elvis Sings the Wonderful World of Christmas, uh, in 71, so many years later. But this isn't... That's not the best selling. It's this one. Yeah, this one's the best selling. Nineteen fifty-seven. Um, this was this was starting to where you know peak Elvis mania was starting, right? Oh, he yes. was taking the world by storm. And what's the better way to do that, to capitalize on that than with a Christmas album? Yeah, and like I said, it's uh, his first album to go uh, diamond, best selling album of all time. One of the best selling <laughs> Christmas albums of all time, obviously. And uh, yeah, I mean. It's got the numbers to back it up. So let's see how the quality holds from, I mean, we are 60, 65 years removed from this album. Yeah. So. Oh, that's weird. You, you, Elvis feels like, a, I mean, maybe it's because of thinking back to childhood, but Elvis still feels like a current cultural figure, you know? Because at least when we were kids, everything referenced Elvis, you know? Yeah, yeah, if you think about it, he died in 77. So by the time we were kids, all our parents who grew up in the 60s and 70s, um, you know, Elvis was still like their idea of like a huge pop star. Yeah. I guess it was kind of transitioning to Michael Jackson at that point. Yeah, yeah. But he was the king of pop, not the king of rock and roll. So Very different. 
I also don't think Elvis ever touched children. But moving on to the album. Um, uh, well, we won't have to get allegedly. Elvis. <laughs> allegedly. I think he met his wife when she was 15, but I, I don't want to get into speculation. Hey, okay, here. let's just talk about the music. <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> too much background. Yeah, let, let's not go to that background. Um, so uh, let's start off with the first song of the album. Santa Claus is back in town. Now I got to ask, did you leave an E off of that or did you actually spell Santa Claus wrong? What do you mean? It's Santa Claus is back in town. Doesn't Claus have an E on the end? Oh, no. I'm no, thinking the, of the movie. <laughs> Never mind. You're thinking of the movie The Santa Claus, which the joke is that's a clause in a contract, <laughs> which is actually kind of funny. But in, no. <laughs> in my defense, I've been drinking too much eggnog. <laughs> Tis the season, right? Huh? Tis the season, right? Exactly. But yeah, Santa Claus is back in town. It's not a very apt name. A uh, better song title would have been It's Christmas Time, which ends up being reissued as the name of the album, so that kind of works better. Yeah, no, it's the, uh, as, as is tradition with these Christmas albums, even dating back all the way to the 50s, uh, this is the the original song on the album, or one of the few original songs to the album. You know, so start with the original, do some classics, and then uh, bring back one more original, which we'll get to later. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty good. It's I mean, for an original, most original Christmas songs are not very good. Uh, it's kind of got Beach Boys harmonies in the background to start things, which I liked. And uh, we get some fun jazz piano there at the 120 mark. I, w- I would say, Cooper, uh, this this song puts our writing into shame a little bit. It's very sexualized through innuendo use instead of just flat out stating things. <laughs> they are a little more subtle back then. Yeah. Uh, he Elvis was hot shit and he knew it. I mean, this was the point where he was starting to realize it. I mean, on his third um, album, that's impressive. I mean, that man, that man sold. So, yeah, no, it's, it's a, his original song, and of course, like you said, it has the vocal backing, um, which are th- this group called the Jordan Airs mm. are, are the ones that are on this uh, throughout the album, which is a vocal qu- uh, quartet. They uh, so. well, they do very well later in the, later in the album. Oh yeah, they had some uh, some much needed uh, vocal harmonies, I suppose, or maybe just volume, because this uh, <laughs> this album sparse. can get pretty can get pretty sparse on the instrumentation side. This one not too bad. I mean, it's got it's not like you know full of sound. It's got like a bluesy guitar, some rock and piano, you know, some pretty basic percussion. Not really any drum kit till much later in the album, though, which is odd. Right. Just, just basically a steady beat. Yeah. Jump into uh, track number two if you're ready. Yes, track number two, White Christmas, a Christmas classic. Um, we've all heard covers of this out the wazoo, including the Drifters cover. Well, you mentioned that. I don't know if you hear at the end, it's about the 150 mark. Uh, he does the Drifters version of White Christmas. He does. He uh, it's, it's the classic vocal, you know, high high pitched one. Yeah, you can. It doesn't go quite that high, that, but I, I know what you do. <laughs> I know what you do. <laughs> my my microphone didn't want to hear me singing. Uh, <laughs> it auto muted no. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it, it's definitely a you know if you it, I would say rip off tribute maybe because uh, the Drifters did come out like in fifty three. Yeah, it was I just believe. a couple years before, so it was, it was definitely a tribute. But I think that shows how. Uh, maybe influential the drifters version of the white christmas because i would argue that's the definitive version of this song drifters yeah oh yeah absolutely i mean the bing crosby one is fine um which is funny that we refer to it as the bing crosby version because i'm pretty sure the whole rat pack is in it um but it's i don't know it's just not the drifters and I, I really liked, I mean, I wasn't a big fan of this one. His vocal fluttering is kind of weird, along with the in, the, in the middle of the song, the really hard attack on the start of the words and the fade off. It's his style, but doesn't fit super well. But once he kind of got into the more modern, quote unquote, drifters version, um, it it sounded a lot better. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting. It's, it really is Elvis doing drifters. Um which is not his typical, I mean, obviously he still has his kind of bravado delivery. Mm-hmm. 
you know, Elvis is, is certainly, you know, even though this is his third album, you know, is he still got his uh, Elvis isms, uh, maybe not as fully formed as they will be later <laughs> yes. uh, in the sixties and the seventies, especially. Um, but they are distinctly here. Um, you know, a, a little more subtle performance, not just, Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's more toned down. You can hear it once in a while, but it's, uh, it's a bit more realistic. I guess you would say I, I did like that live aspect at the start of the song. You get to hear a little bit of like the pre-recording, and I, but uh, I think that's probably the first time I've ever heard Elvis just speak, not sing. Yeah, a little studio banter. I always um, like when uh, artists include that. They've got it at the end of, um, oh, what's the what's the Led Zeppelin song? In uh, My Time. Maybe it's just called In My Time. It's on Physical Graffiti. But uh, he plays what... Be- I don't think it was the SpongeBob definitely wasn't out back then, <laughs> but it became one of the well-known SpongeBob licks that da, 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 that one, you know, I, I can't remember what song it's from, um, but they did that and it ends with a cough and they just have some studio banter in the background and like, I think that's the one. <laughs> no, I, I like, especially on that album, you know, Christmas album, that's supposed to be a little more comfy, a little yes. more cozy. So, you know, kind of a little sneak peek. Uh, yeah. Especially on a song like White Christmas, where it's supposed to be a little fun, lighthearted. Yeah, yeah, it's it's certainly fun, and I I very much enjoyed the Drifters reference since we weren't able to do the Drifters album because there is no Drifters album, <laughs> just a single. It's That's just all they need. Single. Jump to track number three, if you're ready, Cooper. Track number three. Here comes Santa Claus, another Christmas classic. Um, and I'd say that uh, Elvis plays this one pretty straight. I mean, obviously has his Elvis mm-hmm. delivery, uh, but otherwise, you know, it's got the jaunty piano, the, the backing vocals uh, by the qu- uh, quartet and uh, very simple, uh, you know, percussion instrumentation. Now, I read the title of the song and I did not remember what Christmas song it was. Really? Now that I'm reading it again, I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. But it didn't sound anything like the version I've got in my head, which is just probably Bing Crosby again. Um. Yeah, it it just it, I didn't I listened to it and I never even picked up it was a song I knew. You you, you didn't pick up this was Here Comes Santa Claus. Maybe I wasn't listening very closely. <laughs> I think maybe I was this listening is, to the backing is, track the whole time. This is a, this is an extremely popular Christmas song. I know Sam. it. I know. I know it. I know what it is, but I just never made the connection. That's surprising. I think I was listening to the harmonies in the background. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, an extremely, uh, extremely well done Christmas song, but I guess uh, to each their own. I mean, that being said, it's, it's, not, it is very popular, but you don't hear it a ton. Yeah, you do. Not as much as like all I want for Christmas is you. Yeah, but this one's definitely like probably the top, my top 10 played Christmas songs. You think top 10? Yeah, here comes Santa Claus. Ah, here I'm comes gonna, Santa gonna, Claus. Here comes maybe top Santa twenty, Claus. but not top ten. Okay, top twenty maybe, but either on you know definitely the upper echelons of Christmas uh, playage. I definitely think it's a um, it's an exponential kind of thing. Once you get towards the top ten, you know the top twenty is like yeah okay they put those on sometime, but then the top ten are like really heavily played, you know. And this is based on. You didn't even recognize this song. You're just making this up. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the low-key snapping at the start. That's some of the best snapping I've heard in music. It's not in your face at all. Maybe it has something to do with uh, 1950s technology. They hadn't invented stereo music yet. so <laughs> They were still using it. Yeah, I didn't learn how to screw up <laughs> balancing. <laughs> I will say the balancing is kind of all over the place on this album. It's, it's it's kind of old school, but I mean, it's an old school album, so yeah. I think it works. Yeah, it's fine. It's it's not horrible. It's not horribly mixed, but it's just kind of inconsistent. I don't expect the the mixing to be great in albums like before like the sixties. Yeah, and then the sixties they discovered stereo, and that was its own can of worms. Things didn't really level out until like frankly the seventies. <laughs> yeah, once they discovered stereo, it's everything in one ear. I want to sing in the right. 
<laughs> All the instruments left, I'm going to be right. We'll put the bass guitar and drums in the left ear, and then the vocals and the tambourine in the right ear. <laughs> no, and then, uh, no, so I say pretty, pretty straightforward classic Christmas song. Yeah. Jump into track number four if you're ready. Yeah, track number four. I'll be home for Christmas. Now I assume you recognize this one, Sam. Of course. Which is an almost uh, almost jazzy piano rendition of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, he kind of attacks us with a more traditional singing style. I thought for the first half, as opposed to his elvishisms, which kind of um, appear from the one fifteen mark onward. But the first first part of it is just kind of you know, he's just singing. Yeah, you, you can kind of. You... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say you can kind of tell him when he hit, kind of hits the deeper notes. It's kind of whoa, yeah. you know, I, I, his Hank Hill quality I, that he has. I don't know if it's just because I'm more familiar with later Elvis, and this is early, <laughs> um, so he hadn't really leaned into that yet. Later Elvis played up the shtick a little bit, yeah. but you know, he's going a little more subtle here. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, it's a pretty like besides that little jazzy piano, you know, it's got some nice, you know, backing vocals. Again, I think the the quartet's. Uh, kind of pulling their weight here, especially on that nice little chorus outro that they have. Oh, yeah, that that chord structure right at the end note, that is beautiful. Yeah, the Jordan ears were uh, earning their pay on this one. Absolutely. They, <laughs> in some songs, they're better than Elvis. Wow, I'm looking at the, uh, the Jordan ears were active from 1948 to 2013. Wow. <laughs> I'm assuming there is some personnel change in yeah. there. <laughs> well, if you, I, when we were talking about doing the Drifters, I looked up their uh, wiki with the members. They've had like 50 members. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm looking at the Jordan Ears. Um, their their bass vocalist was from '58, so actually, right after this album came out, to 2013. Wow. That's impressive. And he is he he's still alive. <laughs> he just quit <laughs> quit quit that uh, that group, huh? Well, their tenor uh, vocalist died in 2013. Oh, so who had joined in in 51? So he was on this album. Okay. So they broke up after uh, their ten uh, tenor uh, died. Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Right, if uh, you've been if you've been together with a group of guys that long, it's like uh, don't really want to replace him. I guess that's the end. I mean, that's that's an impressive amount of uh, that is longevity. But uh, no, back to the back to the album. So pretty good one. Yeah, pretty um, short. Yeah, all the songs on here are like two, two and a half minutes long. It's a thirty-minute album, so Elvis keeps it pretty tight. Uh, so on to track number five, "Blue Christmas." We had "White Christmas," now we got "Blue Christmas," which I would say is probably the definitive Elvis Christmas song. Yeah. As before this album it was the only elvis christmas song i knew i mean this is uh obviously that the, he's done a lot of covers on this album and santa claus is back in town it's an original but you don't really hear that one that often but blue christmas that one's in the rotation that's a staple yeah yeah it is it is <laughs> that is in the top 10 for sure of most played christmas songs it is i uh, oh, sorry go ahead oh no no I was just gonna say, and I, I, I like it. Yeah, I, there's there's good reason that it's most played. Um, th this one though always makes me think of uh, Year Without a Santa Claus, the Rankin Bass oh, yeah, Christmas yeah. movie. Uh, you know the one with the heat and snow misers. <laughs> the classic. Yeah, I always feel like this song should be in that movie. It's not, but it feels like it should be. I mean, it's a little more active of a song than the the, the past ones. You know, got a little guitar actually, some guitar action. Mm -hmm. um, Elvis is playing laying it a little thicker than the other songs, but you know, it's his original, and it's got these uh, little backing vocals, these oo oo oos. It's got some drums. Haven't really had much drums on this album so far. Yeah, percussion's been very light, and it's still pretty light on this song. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like the little uh, vocal chorus break that they have at like the one thirty mark. Elvis lets the uh, Jordanaires uh, jump in every now and then and really take up some space. Yeah, it's I mean, it's just a, it's an all around good song. The, I will say the uh, breakdown that consists of just the backing track continuing with a little bit of extra vocals, not much of breakdown, but you know, whatever. 
Yeah, I mean, this this one, you know, it, it brings a little something new to the table in terms of your classic, you know, Christmas songs, giving us a little more rhythm and blues, right? Um, which you don't typically hear in, in, in the Christmas set, guys. So, moving on then to track number six, if you're ready, Sam. I am indeed. Track number six, Santa Bring My Baby Back, parentheses to me. Which is actually another Santa, or another Elvis original. Um, so he's got three on the album. Um, now this one's definitely the, the lesser of the originals, I feel. Yeah, it does feel very traditionally Elvis, though. Kind of much more of that traditional swinging rock styling that I associate him with. Yeah, a little more swing, a little more sock hoppy. Um, oh, that's why you don't like it, I see. <laughs> I was always scared at that line. Um, I, I, I typically give him a pass more so than some other artists I've heard. Um, this one's a, this one's a little more on the nose, I feel. Um, especially with his little backing vocals. You know, Santa's coming back to me. Yeah. It's kind of repeat throughout the song. I mean, I, I didn't think it was that bad. It was, you know, it was fine, Elvis song. This one made me just start thinking about him doing a version of uh, Melikaliki Maka. Did he cover that? No. I don't think he did, and I think it was it's the perfect song for because he already had a Hawaii album. Yeah, <laughs> he was already kind of tied to it. Why didn't he do that song on this album? That feels like the perfect. Had that song even come out yet, Cooper? That was that was Bing Crosby. I, I, you know, I don't remember everything about everyone. I'm pretty sure that came out in like the 30s. Well, he had two Christmas albums, and I guess he didn't cover them on either. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure Melikaliki Maka was the 30s, but I might be wrong. Um, but yeah, this song just was like, yeah, man, he really should have done that. That would have been a really, really good cover for him. Eh, well, the guy, uh, I guess he decided not to. Or maybe Bing's very protective <laughs> of his uh, intellectual pr property. That way, yeah, because that was a, well, did he, did, I don't know the history of Christmas songs, so I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Was White Christmas a Bing invention, or did that? I assume that was a song before he did it. Uh, I actually do not know. I I'm, think it's a Bing original. Really? I know Meli Kalikimaka is. I see. That's the thing with Christmas songs; it's always hard to tell, you know, where they actually originated from. Yeah, because like Silent Night, that's really, really old. That that's old, old. Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem, that's really, really old. Um. Noel on the first Noel, whatever, that's really, really old. But then some of these more modern ones, I mean, we, we all know Mariah Carey made All I Want for Christmas is You. And Elvis wrote Blue Christmas. But once you get to like the Bing era, it's like, okay, well, did he make those or? He, he did. Well, he, he did, did the initial performance of White Christmas. Okay. So that was the first time that had been released? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if he did White, if, I mean, Elvis did White Christmas, so he should be able to do Melikaliki Maka then. Eh, well, maybe you just didn't think about it. Missed a hat trick there. Could have done it. All right. Well, that's the end of that song. So that's also the end of the first side of the album, side one. On the B side. And now we move on to side two with track number seven, Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem. In which we enter the slow half of the album. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, this album, this, this half of the album gets... Pretty, pretty slow. <laughs> it, it starts and, slow and gets slower somehow. Yeah, it's not a... <laughs> Elvis, uh, the, the, he decided to decide who's going to be most of the kind of, you know, Christmas gospel songs. Mm -hmm. Or I guess kind of like, we were talking about uh, classics. These ones are like the classic classics, right? Yeah. Where we're going back to like the 1800s. Um, and as you can imagine, 1800 songs have a traditionally slower and more... Uh, limited instrumentation palette. Yeah, because they mainly performed as choral pieces. Uh, yes. But this one, I will say, I do like his kind of vocal trill that he does with this. It fits the song, especially accompanied with the Leslie speaker um, on the organ. It's just a nice little... It's not quite... Maybe it is just a flat rock organ. Maybe it's a Wurlitzer, but... it's It's a nice combination. Fine. It's very sleepy, though. Yeah. 
Um, it's, it's mostly just Elvis in that like kind of low organ uh, with like some very light percussion. I mean, the back um, choir does quite a bit of heavy lifting on this one. They do, but you know, the energy is kind of all very far low. Uh, which I mean, obviously, it's a little, a little town, town of Bethlehem. Of Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect it to be, you know, two hundred beats per minute. Elvis is just riffing through this, um, but you know, it's an extremely stripped back version of the song. I think uh, it which, works you know, pretty it, well. Which you know, you know, granted, it is to the original. But I think one of the things about a Christmas album is what can the individual performer bring to that particular interpretation of the song, right? Mm, I see. Um, and this one's pretty, like, just straightforward. Obviously, you know, Elvis has his own vocals, uh, but even obviously keeps them pretty subtle on this one. I I think it was a tasteful rendition. Oh, no, it was tasteful. Maybe too tasteful? (laughs) Certainly isn't it. (laughs) You you should have got a little more out there, a little more adventurous, you know? That's true. I mean, the, the, the Drifters didn't become the best version of White Christmas of all time without going a little bit out there. Right. Jump into eight if you're ready, Coop. Yeah, track number eight, Silent Night. Which has always been the slowest of slow Christmas songs. Yeah. Uh, his voice does not work with this. Yeah, Silent Night has a very specific, you know, vocal delivery, right? It's got to have almost like, you know. Bing Crosby. <laughs> yeah, Bing Crosby or like this very smooth, you know, like kind of low stress, just completely almost like ethereal vocal delivery Very and I, I don't when I, when I think ethereal I don't think Elvis <laughs> Presley <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's all I had for the, I didn't write I, I didn't write much for this one it was not good. I mean the, again this one's played very straight just basically Elvis and backing piano yeah uh, the fun fact about this song you know is, is uh, written in 1818 it's originally a, a German song mm-hmm. Stille Nacht mm-hmm. uh, Heilige Nacht um but it's actually declared a intangible cultural heritage, uh, which I didn't even know there was a. Uh, you could declare a, a song a cultural heritage. I For thought that Germany? was interesting. Uh, yes, I assume that makes sense. I remember um, when I was a kid in church. I think they. Uh, I'm pretty sure we did the German version for half of it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, originally German. Now, if he'd performed the German version of this, that'd have been a little more interesting. That would that would have been more interesting. It probably Listening to Elvis at that point, actually. Though I'm not sure if Germany was super popular in the 1950s in America. That's a good point. Or yeah. really anywhere. <laughs> so yeah. you know. Now that you mention it, there was probably a little bit of a sore sticking point at that point. So, so maybe I don't blame him on that yeah. one. Jump to track number nine if you're ready. Yeah, track number nine. There'll be peace in the valley for me. Um, which is a, a little lesser played of uh, Christmas songs. Or I'm not even sure if this technically even counts as a Christmas song. I don't think it is. Per I've, se. I've never heard it. It's actually... Um, so I was looking at uh, this up. So obviously the, this was written like back in the 1930s. Mm-hmm. So it was a... Uh, you know, it's not an Elvis original. But it looks like this song... Um, as well as literally the rest of the songs on this album um, were actually originally recorded for an EP that Elvis released um, called Peace of the Valley. So, it just so this was music. So this was recorded in 1957. <laughs> and then basically he added it on to the end of his Christmas album. Okay, because it was already just gospel music. Yeah, so yeah, straight gospel uh, EP. They still have the Jordan Airs, so you know it's the same personnel between the albums. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that being said, they do all the heavy lifting in this song. That bass voice at the one minute mark, holy crap, can he sing? Oh yeah, that the the, ba- the bass vocals on this are, are like amazing. It's insane. But other than that, there's there's not really enough going on. <laughs> the choir is the star. It's just so sparse. It's Elvis choir and a little bit of piano. And yes. Even the piano is like once every four bars or some shit like that. Yeah, it's very <laughs> interspersed. And again, I mean, the Jordan Ayers are doing great with their backing vocals. Mm-hmm. 
but Elvis's vocals, while not bad, just, you know, they don't, I'm, I'm not sure if they fit as closely with this kind of, you know, very, you know, slow and introspective kind of singing. Yeah. Yeah, he, he needs uh, blue suede shoes. <laughs> Good song. Um, on to track number 10, then. I Believe. <laughs> I couldn't believe that this album wasn't over yet. Yeah, this whole EP is like, you know, obviously the EP form, you know, with four songs, it was kind of like, obviously I'll come for a very specific vibe, but at the end of an album, after already two pretty slow Christmas songs, really, really makes the back half of this album drag majorly. It's And each one is slower than the last. Yeah, it's like a ramping, it's like a one big fade out, but it's for six songs. <laughs> also, they're the, they're the longest songs, some of the longest songs on the album too, I believe. Oh yeah, um, but this one in particular, or sorry, this one in particular, uh, it sounds like the bongos are flat. If they're even, if they even are bongos, it, it, uh, maybe it's a gong. I don't know. It's <laughs> how is it possible? Yeah, I, I don't. I, very subdued percussion. Um, well, see, Elvis puts a, a little bit of power into some of those the belts he goes into on this one um which wakes you up a little bit yeah i was i was snoozing i did catch he he said every time he touches a leaf he was telling us to go outside and touch grass <laughs> Elvis was the original gamer most people don't know that elvis was really into league of legends <laughs> No, but yeah, these, these songs did a dang near acapella at points. Yeah. Um, Let's keep slogging. Track number yeah. 11. Track number 11. Take my lord, or take my hand, precious lord. <laughs> take which, uh, returns, away, lord. <laughs> which uh, goes back to the electronic church organ. Um, and, you know, obviously this uh, <laughs> this album was zeroed in on the sound. It's a rock organ, Cooper, not a not a classical organ. Uh, yeah, electric organ. This so, you, way I describe this one is it's very similar to Peace in the Valley, but the choir isn't doing any heavy lifting anymore. Right, it's just Elvis. And that definitely, uh, again, Elvis isn't singing bad on any of these songs, no. right? You know, he's put a little hard into it, but it's just Elvis, basically. Yeah. Um, which, you know, back to back to back is, is does not make for a super interesting listen. Like, I feel like a couple of these songs that could at least brought in, you know, a little instrumentation, just some guitar, bells, maybe. Oh, yeah, Anything to kind of make it more interesting. Because, I mean, obviously, you know, the instrumentation about this album has been pretty scarce, but they, they made it work within the first, you know, several songs. Yeah. It's just a gospel songs are boring <laughs> is what it yeah, boils is... down to. But yeah, but Elvis doesn't do anything to try to make them more interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, again his own take on this and just completely straight jumping to the uh, next track it's it's the, even final, the final track on this album track number 12 it is no secret what god can do uh, which is completely on brand for this album <laughs> uh, for, for this back half of the album just being extremely slow um and i guess we should we should probably specify at least for me, you know, a slow song isn't bad. No. And even an album slow songs isn't bad, right? No. If that's the, the vibe you're going for. No, not at all. But these are blending together. Yes. Of just, you know, the exact same, you know, instrumentation. And, you know, basically the only thing really changing is the words. Yeah. Uh, this was really not something you needed to listen to as an album. Christmas songs are made to be put in with other Christmas songs random around so you don't get all the same all together. Even then, I, I think the first half of this album kind of demonstrated that, you know, even having a song Christmas album, says, you know, that could be fun back to back. Yeah. You know, White Christmas is a lot different than Blue Christmas. Yeah. You know, we had, you know, I'll Be Home for Christmas, which is, you know, a slower Christmas song, but obviously had some more jazzy renditions. Um, this back one just played completely straight i think to its detriment very much so i mean this one's okay but it's so repetitive and it's so long and it's slower than the than the rest anything else on the album 
this just feels like you're just kind of like falling asleep as you're walking towards the end. Yeah, I think sleepy is probably the best word to describe the back half yeah, of this album. Very sleepy. I mean, all this, you know, he, he's putting some heart into the vocal delivery on this one, yeah. but. And in his defense, that is what the songs are. They're not bad. It's just kind of boring. Yeah. But he also chose to put these songs on this album. So. True. He needed to pat. He, I mean, he, he had four, he had up through silent night and he's like, shit, I guess not, he <laughs> not long enough for an album. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, he had EP just sitting there, and it's okay. Let's package this in. This this album just barely breaches half an hour. <laughs> yeah, so he he needed that to push it to the final home stretch. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's the end of the album. It's a pretty pretty tight listen. Not thirty minutes long. It's a it's a short one. Didn't feel mm-hmm. felt felt longer than thirty minutes. I'll be honest. <laughs> Those last 15 minutes felt longer than 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, In that case, Sam, uh, what would you say is your favorite track off of this album? I would have to say Here Comes Santa Claus, I think. Hmm. Um, it was just his his vocal stylings fit really... It, of all the songs, I think that's the one where his vocal stylings fit the best. Um, and there were some really good harmonies in the background, and there's... I don't know, it's just... Just all around a fun song. What about you? Say Blue Christmas. Um, basic. Which, yes, maybe the basic choice here. But also, I think there's a reason. It, it's like the staple song that came from this album. And that's, you know, an Elvis original. Yeah. Um, you know, it kind of combines Elvis's kind of bluesy background. And uh, obviously, I, I think Elvis works for, uh, best in, you know, either he's kind of having fun with it. Like, you know, here comes Santa Claus, right? Mm-hmm. Or it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of, you know, laying it on thick, you know, kind of sad song. I will say um, Blue Christmas probably does have the best production value of ever, any song on this album. That is also true. Um, and a little guitar, of all things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get a little bit of guitar as a treat. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just like the, this song. And, you know, obviously it, it's the original and it's the one that's still in rotation. So held the test of time. Now, what's your least favorite song, Cooper? Oh, yeah, that one's kind of hard because it uh, you could kind of take anything in the back half of this album and kind of slot it in. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I believe I believe has some good belts, you know, here and there. So maybe take my hand. It's like you know, extremely sleepy. Like you said, it's kind of like there'll be peace in the valley, but without the backing chorus. Um, so so probably that one. It just that's the last half of this album is a, is a kind of a hard listen. That's fair. What about you, Sam? I would have to say Silent Night mm, because okay. the 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 other ones, yes, they're boring, yes, they're slow, but they're not actively bad. Silent Night was actively bad. Um, his vocal stylings do not fit <laughs> with the song whatsoever. And uh, that's, that was that. All right. Well, here we are at the end. And uh, Cooper, why don't you tell us about how we rate things? Well, I would be happy to, Sam, because uh, as you know, uh, Sam, that uh, you and I have, uh, well, we're into the car industry. Uh, we each buy 12 cars every month, mm-hmm. uh, preferably on weekends, but sometimes weekdays. Um and through no fault of our own, they always end up totaled. Uh, we're millions of dollars in debt. It's amazing that we still have credit. Um, but of course, given our, our love of cars, you know, we got to keep buying more cars. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, we've decided to make our rating system car themed. Um, so at the tip to top, the cream of the crop, you got showroom. You know, this is the best of the best the, the, the you have to listen to. And then all the way at the bottom, you got scrapyard. This is the bottom of the barrel, the ooh, gross, get it away from me. Uh, that you, you just never want to listen to again. And then you got like new fixer up or used rental. And we'll give it like a high or a low, kind of depending on what we feel like that day. So with all that said, Sam, what would you rate this album? Uh, maybe a bit controversial. I'm going to say mid-middle-high used rental. Um, 
I think probably about half this album is skippable, which firmly puts it below Fixer Upper, I think. Um, when you'd be better off just, yeah, don't bother listening to it. It's not very good. I mean, the first, if you listen to it, you know, you listen up through Oh Little Town of Bethlehem. You're like, okay, good. But then you've got the rest of the album left. And it's like, it's not, it's not worth it. What about you, Coop? Yeah, I think I'm in agreement. I think it's a solid used rental. Um, where it's not like, it's not, it's no, nowhere near a scrapyard, right? It's not actively bad no. in any capacity. But the back half of the album is just so boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, hey, you know, if you're into the, the, the gospel music type delivery here, you know, you'll, you'll be eating on this album. Cooper, but it, it, over and over. it can't be boring. It's the best selling Christmas album of all time. <laughs> Well, I will say that the first half of this album, I do genuinely like. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's scarce in instrumentation. It's not like it's, you know, my favorite first half of the album of all time. But, you know, it's it's fun. It's got some good Christmas songs, some good Elvis originals. Um, and I, I think it hits all the right boxes that you need to be a, a solid Christmas album. Uh, just that back half with the EP, you know, just back to back to back. Maybe we sprinkled it throughout the album a little more, you know know balanced like instead of putting them all next to each other um, i'm not sure how much the album experience was considered back in the 50s no <laughs> i'm thinking not much um which fair we're, we're judging it by a standard today that you know it itself was not being held to back in the 50s i mean cooper if you look at albums released today they're not built for album experiences either that's true but Most even then the album themselves usually you know have some sort of a general mixing of emotions or you know even if there's no like through line of the albums, you know, there's there's generally at least a little thought put into the ordering. Sometimes, yeah, it was literally just he's like he didn't even change the order of the EPs. He just <laughs> put it on the back of the album. See, honestly though, I think if it was interspersed, it would just make the whole album worse. <laughs> I think it's kind of good to have them away, not contaminating any of the other songs. I guess from a purely vinyl perspective, everything's on side of one, right? Yeah. So you just don't flip. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it definitely brings it down. I mean, Elvis. Good performance throughout, and the Jordan ears really carry their weight on this album. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I can just recommend a full listen for all of it. You know, take take Blue Christmas, take a couple of the other Christmas Everybody songs. Everybody already is already listening to Blue Christmas, Cooper. <laughs> if you haven't heard this Little Jim Blue Christmas, add it to your Christmas rotation. Um, no, but you know, overall can't can't recommend the full album. Um, but you know, it's, it's got some some decent Christmas licks on it. I think in terms of Elvis, you know, bringing his A game, you know, he, he had the first half of the album and it, it kind of hit all the right cylinders. It just, as an album experience, it's kind of a lot to be desired. Yeah, it's not great. Anyway, that's the album. Um, now we're going to roll on over to the spare tire, which is just whatever else we've been listening to uh, in the past week. Um, I have been listening to a lot, and I mean a lot, of Tom Cardi's new album. Um, let me pull up what it's called. You mean Tom Candy? No, no. No, Tom Cardi. Oh, is it Cardi? Yeah, it's Cardi. C-A-R-D-Y. I think I read it as Candy. <laughs> uh, and he, he's his new album is Big Dumb Idiot. Uh, but it's got uh, Red Flags, which is a fantastic song. But it also has a brand new song that he just released called The Ballad of Smokin' Joe Rude Boy, which is like this Western, wild classical Wild West type song. But he still uses synth and vocoder in it. And it just works. It's so good. Uh, and I've also been listening to a bunch of um, Hey, I Don't Work Here from that album as well, which just sounds like a classic pop song if I've ever heard one. So definitely go listen to those three songs if you haven't already. They are fantastic. And there's also Naughty or Nice on there, which is a good one. Um, the 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 titular album, Big Dumb Idiot, is also quite good. That was a short that he later made into a full song. Um, just very good. He's a, Of course, he's a comedy uh, musician, which is harder to do than just a normal comedian. And it's, it's just fantastic. Uh, I also listened to the new Snail House single. I don't remember what it's called. I think it was called... I think that one was called Candy. 
It is pretty sugary sweet. Uh, I think. Let me let me double check. And I'm still deep into my mystery skulls kick. Of course. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The the new single is called Cherry. Cherry. Not close enough. But that's that's what I've been listening to this week and catching up on podcasts quite a bit. What about you, Coop? Yeah, I uh, also listened to the John Cardi album. Um, I okay. thought it was pretty. Got it. It's it's not John. Tom, sorry, I, I, why can't I get his name right? I listened to the Tom Cardi album. Tom Candy, I think, John I, I, I Cardi. Think, I, I'm actually thinking of John Candy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good actor. Tom Cardi. Uh, it kind of sounds like Tom Hardy. Mm-hmm. This guy's got a confusing name is what I'm saying. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, a goofy little, you know, uh, album with a lot of synth. Um, that I quite liked. Um, the wise, uh, There's a new Wise Blood album. I say new. It came out this year, but it's a while ago that I finally listened to, and I quite enjoyed that as well. I've always kind of enjoyed her music. Very wistful. No, which is kind of, you know, a little little moody. A little moody for, you know, this kind of colder time of year that I quite liked. Yeah, and beyond that, just kind of been listening to some of my playlists. Like, like you said, catching up on podcasts before the end of the year here. I'm so far uh, behind on podcasts. There's one podcast I probably haven't listened to since like June. I like to I like to keep up to date on my my history podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're not changing, so why bother? Or or or. Anyway, that's that's all we got. If you've enjoyed listening and you want to hear some more, if you scroll down on the Twitch page, you can see a picture of Jeff Lynn. He's the guy with the aviators and the fake afro. Click that, it'll take you to YouTube where all the past episodes, minus the one Super Tramp that I forgot to upload, are. And if you're listening on YouTube and you want to listen live, you can come Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern, usually. Definitely won't have one next week. Probably won't have one the week after that because New Year's. <laughs> We're not going to have one uh, New Year's Day. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Uh, so this is the last last one of the year. First this... one of next year, I imagine, will be a recap of this year, just going back through the albums and... Yeah, we'll so do a we'll do a full full are. recap of the year of the frog. Yes, year of the frog, which I'm pretty sure we didn't start until mid year. <laughs> so, da, 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 da. <laughs> and we'll reveal the new year theme at that point yes. as well. Um, so a, um, yeah, keep, I usually have. I can't remember. Yeah, so well, make sure to follow us at Audio Shop Pod on Twitter, yeah. and we'll let you know when we're listening to something and Twitter what we're listening to. Exists. Hey, Twitter is still going strong despite Elon's best efforts. Can we even can we even say come watch us on Twitch on Twitter anymore? Did you see that rule change? Well, you're not allowed to uh, like post a link or anything. You're not allowed to link to outside social media. You'll get oh, banned man. for saying follow me on Facebook. You'll get banned for saying check out, you know, these any other social media sites. So I don't know oh, if Twitch Elon. is lumped into that. So I guess we'll find out. Oh, geez. It's not well, like we have many followers on Twitter anyway. <laughs> well, Silva, give us a follow there if you want to. and I, uh, I think we might need to make that Mastodon, Cooper. I think that's the next one. <laughs> Is that what we got to move on to? I mean, it might be at least worth checking out and getting in there early. Well, at any rate, hopefully uh, we'll be able to see you all next year and that you all have happy holidays. Yeah. Yeah, take it easy, uh, have a drink if you can, and hopefully don't freeze to death. <laughs> Try to avoid it if you can. Yeah, it's not a good time. Anyway, that's all we got. Thank you all for wa- <laughs> thank you all for watching, and we will see you next year. See you later, shoppies. See you.